Alright, so let's set up a synced toggle for some object in our scene. I set up one of these previously, but there have been a lot of updates since then that make this a lot more efficient. So let's get started. I have a button that I'm using right here as my button, and it just has a box collider on it for interacting. So let's set up a graph for it. We'll do add component boot on behavior. And on here we can press new program, but I'll put it in a different folder than you probably want it. So I'm gonna put it in my object toggle folder. Right click here, create VRChat Udon, Udon Graph Program Asset. Now I'm just going to call this Synced Toggle. Now if we go back to our object in our scene, we can just drag this into the slot and press Open Udon Graph. We have two things that are going to be changing or that will be variables for this. One is a saved state of this object being on and off, and two would be the game object that we're actually toggling on and off. So let's go ahead and make those variables right now. We'll make a bool, and I'll just call this state. And if we hit the drop down here, we'll just press public and synced. And public will just let it show up in the inspector after we hit compile. And synced means that it will sync to other players. Next, we need our game object. So I'll make this a little bit bigger and type game object. And I'll just name this target. If we hit the drop down here. We can also hit public and hit compile. And we can see here that it appears in our inspector. So we'll just drag orb into here, just the object I'm going to be toggling. And then we have a reference there. So now we need to actually set up the logic for this event. Since this is going to be when we interact with something, being the button, we need the interact event. So space to search and type interact. And there we go. Now since state is a synced value on this script, only the owner of that information can be changing it. So we need to set ourselves to be the owner whenever we interact with this. Similarly to the last video, we'll just do networking set owner, plug the flow in right there, and we need the local player to be doing this. So drag out from player and type local, and the only one that shows up is local player. Just select that. If we leave object empty, it'll be referencing whatever object this script is on, which is perfectly fine, but I like to populate that reference just so it's easier to read. So I'll just drag out from here and type this, and that way it references this object, which just has a node for it instead of being empty. All right, now that we're the owner, we're going to switch the state of the state. And since it's a bool, we just need to set it to be true if it's false or false if it's true. Control drag out from our bool in our variables box to get a set to variable node. We'll connect it in the float here, and we need to get the opposite value here. Drag out from state normally to get a reference to it. And to get the flipped value, we just type unary negation. Bit of a long word, but should work for us. Connect that into value, so it flips it and then sets it to the inverted value. And now we have a bool with a different value. So we need to actually set this to do something. Like we have our synced state, but we're not doing anything with that state yet. To do that, we drag out from target. We'll drag out from there to get set active. And here we need to actually give it our state bool. Now we just plug that in here. However, our flow isn't connected to anything, so nothing will actually call this. So we could put it here, but the way that we sync this with other players is we need to be able to basically run this twice. And in the event we want to change this, instead of having the same set of nodes in two different locations, it would be easier just to have it in one location and call it for both instances. That might seem a bit complicated, but I'll walk you through it here. Specifically for this implementation, we're going to be changing to manual sync. Now, if we look at our behavior over here in our component, the first thing at the beginning is synchronization. And since it's set to continuous right now, it sends out all sync to data four times a second, which is way more than we need and way less efficient than we want to be having. We're going to set this to be manual so that it only sends out information when we want it to, which means it's happening much less often than it needlessly has to, but also happens almost instantly instead of waiting for that next period. With that change, we can go back into our graph and add the request serialization node. Now, request serialization basically translates to send out information. So whenever this node gets run, it takes any synced information that we have, say our synced bool over here, and distributes that to all other players. We'll connect that in here. And now when other players are receiving information, that is in the on deserialization event. 
Again, request serialization is sending out the information and on deserialization is when you're receiving the information. On deserialization. And with this node, we want to be calling this section over here. But since we want to be calling it from up here as well, we're going to have this in its own custom event. So we'll do event custom. And I'll call this apply toggle. Connect the flow up there so that this actually will run. With that set up, we want a send custom event node. So we'll do send custom event. And this will give us a list of all of the different events that are on our script. If we hit compile, we'll make sure that this is all fully loaded. And the drop down here will let us select apply toggle. Now, this is basically saying when someone receives this information, run this event. But since we're the ones who are distributing this information, we're never receiving that information. So we also need to run send custom event up here. So basically, instead of having to duplicate this entire set of nodes for whatever changes we may have in the future, we're only duplicating a single node that is calling this set of nodes here. All right, shift space to leave full screen, and we can actually hit play to test it out right now. I'm using the creator companion, which is set up with client sim, and I'm going to walk forward and go press this button, and it should enable our orb here. And there you go, you see it's spinning there, and that should be synced as well. Of course, that doesn't show up in client sim since it's only one player, so let's actually go ahead and check this out in VRChat. In the SDK Builder tab, we can actually go and set our number of clients to be two so that we can launch multiple local users instead of just one. Hit Build and Test, and now we wait. All right, so with VRChat launched up now, I'm gonna put one to the left and one to the right, and we'll start out with the one on the left. But this implementation is actually immediately compatible for late joiners, so I'm on the left going to run up and press the button, and then the one on the right will join the world and should see exactly the same state and then be able to change the values on their own. So if I come up here, hold tab, I can press the button and there you go. You see it spinning around. I'll leave that on, swap over to this one. And as well, I load in and can see the object on as well. I can also come up and press the button and you'll see that it toggles on and off for both players. Perfect, so that's the synced toggle and graph. Now let's go back and set it up in U Sharp as well. I'll just open up the graph so we can reference it while making our U Sharp script. And down in our project window, I'll just right click create U Sharp script. Call this synced toggle sharp so that I don't have naming conflicts. And we can just open that up as soon as it's done compiling. Now for some initial setup, we don't need our start event. We'll just clear that. And I'll put this in a namespace as always, so that if I have this in a project that someone else already has a script named sync toggle sharp, it won't conflict. So I'll just have namespace that again, and open close brackets around the whole script. Now, remember how we selected manual sync in the inspector? With U sharp, we can actually declare which type of syncing that this will be using, regardless of what we said in the inspector. We can just enforce it. And that's with a attribute. An attribute is just something before something else you put square brackets around. So inside of here, we're going to do udon behavior sync mode. And in parentheses, we'll select manual. Close the parentheses. And this just enforces that this script will always use manual syncing. Now, if you take a look at our variables here, let's go ahead and replicate them. First one is a public bool state. So we'll just type public bool state. And the second one is a public game object. So public game object target. Now to set state to be synced, similarly, we use an attribute. We put our square brackets in front of it and type udon synced. And there you go. This just declares that this value will be synced the same as pressing this check mark over here. Now let's start with our interact event. Now interact is a VRChat event, so we'll have to override it which is just with public override. And then we can type interact and it should autofill. We don't need the base.interact line, so we can go ahead and clear that. And the first thing we do over here as well is set ownership. So we'll do networking.setOwner. And in here, we'll pass it the local player, so networking.localPlayer. And then we'll pass it this game object as well. Just type game object with a lower G. And that references the game object that this script is on. Now that we've set up ownership, we can just flip the value of state. So we'll set state 
to equal the opposite of state. And that exclamation point just declares opposite. Following that, we just do request serialization, which should autofill and has parentheses and a semicolon and the line. Of course, now we need to actually set up our apply toggle event here so that we can call it. So since this doesn't need to be called from any other scripts, we can do a private void apply toggle. So this one will just be setting how target is. So we'll do target.setActive parentheses state. Now we can call that immediately after request serialization, apply toggle parentheses semicolon. But now we also need to set up for on deserialization as well. So since this is a VRChat event as well, we'll need to override it. So public override on deserialization. Again, we don't need the baseline. And all we need to do is call apply toggle once again. And there we go. That is the entire U Sharp script for this as well. And let's go ahead and implement it and test it in VRChat as well. A quick swap out our Udon behavior here. We can actually do add component and type synced toggle sharp. Because it's using a C Sharp script as a backend, we can actually just search for it right here. Now let's grab our orb, put it in there. And we can actually just immediately go to the VRChat SDK, build and build and test with two new clients. All right, and just like before, I'll run up with one client and press the button so it toggles the state. And then we can have the other player come in and observe that it is toggled as well. And there you go, it is toggled on both players as well. I can come up and toggle it as well, and then the other player can toggle it back. And this syncing works perfectly fine on both ends. And there you go, that's it for this one. And... I hope you enjoy. We'll see you next time.